Welcome back. We are here with the man, the myth, the legend, the creator of the August Underground Trilogy, Fred Vogel. Fred, what's up, man? Hey, what's happening? Hey, it's good to hear from you, man. Like I said, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you guys got a big new release coming up, so uh, I know it's probably hectic around your parts right now. Uh, it's crazy, but you know, it's it's one of those things where just we get down and dirty and we're just trying to get everything ready to go to get the movie out for everybody and we got a screening this weekend up at cinema wasteland in ohio so i'm very excited to show people the movie oh that's awesome man well let's let's jump right into it man you know you got a lot of fans listening and, and they want to know about toe tag man so uh what was the first horror movie you ever seen and what inspired you not to just be a director but a horror movie director uh the first movie it has to be Frankenstein, uh, James Whale's uh, 1931 classic. Um, I think that's right then and there, the first time I saw Boris Karloff, his, his makeup uh, done by Jack Pierce, it literally blew my mind because I was watching like this dead guy walking around and his face was so cool. And uh, I wanted to be Frankenstein. I wanted to, to know more about Frankenstein. I wanted to uh, know more about makeup. I, from that movie, uh, that pretty much spawned the, the monster that I am today. <laughs> awesome, man. Who, who's your favorite director of all time? Oh, God, it's so hard, man, to uh, to pick up a favorite director. Uh, there's so many guys that uh, have inspired me through the years, um, and not just in the horror genre, you know, um, but... If, you know, if I have to, if I have to pick one, I'm going to pick Hitchcock because Hitchcock is definitely uh, a true filmmaker and uh, really knew how to make you know make really suspenseful films, and uh, I admire that a lot. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, what, what was the first horror movie you ever made, and, and was there any projects you did before you started Toe Tag Inc.? Um, you know, when I, when I first started making movies, uh, I, I started off just making little, like, videos on the weekends with my friends. I was, uh, I was going to art school in Pittsburgh, and uh, I was doing special effects. I was going to school for special effects. And on the weekends, I would just make movies with my buddies, and they were, uh, we would bring them into class on Monday, and, you know, everybody would laugh and have a good time with them. And from there, I... Um, I got a, a gig from the school. They wanted to do this uh, this project. They were building the first bicycle to ever ride in Antarctica. So uh, they asked me to shoot a documentary for it. And I wasn't even part of the film class, but my, you know, my name got around that I was making these really good little movies. And uh, they picked me instead of the, you know, some of the kids in the film program. So I, I made this thing. It, I won a Genie Award. It was on the Discovery Channel. And uh, that was pretty cool. But, uh, you know, special effects was always, like, my thing until uh, I just started to fall out of love with it. I, I mean, like, I love it, but it just, you know, my, my directing passion really kicked in, and I really wanted to make movies. Um, and at the height of my special effects career, when I was teaching, uh, I made my first film, August Underground. Wow, exactly. So, uh, so wh where did you learn how to do special effects makeup? And is it true that you were an instructor for Tom Savini's um, school where, you know, you can go to learn that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, once I started realizing that, you know, all the monsters and, and all the stuff in, in movies was fake and that it was special effects makeup, uh, you know, I got into it. My mother was very supportive. She would buy me makeup. I would literally stay in my bathroom for hours practicing on myself, doing different makeups, uh, spraying fake blood everywhere, and... Um, just really learning about it, and then, you know, all through you know high school and stuff like that, I was an art I was an art student. And I always did lots of art, trying to focus somehow onto special effects. I just didn't know how to do it. And at the time, there was really only two schools that uh, offered anything with special effects, and that was Joe Belasco's makeup school and uh, the art institutes. So 
Um, I went to the Art Institute, and that's pretty much where I got my background. I was really just a good stepping stone, but I learned a lot from books and just watching and learning. That's awesome, man. Okay. But, uh, yeah, for, for those that don't know who Tom Savini is, he's, he's an incredible special effects makeup artist. You know, he's done many films and even starred in, uh, well, has been in Dawn of the Dead, Maniac, Friday the 13th, and, and you know, the list goes on, so... Yeah, I mean, he was a machete, too. Oh, that's right. in, you know, uh, I, right, out of the, right out of the Art Institute, I got hired by what became the Tom Savini Makeup Program. So, I mean, you know, one of the re main reasons why I moved to Pittsburgh from New Jersey was to, you know, meet Tom Savini and meet George Romero and to, you know, Pittsburgh was like the, the zombie capital of the world in my book, you know, and that's where I wanted to be. That's what's up, man. All right. Now, uh, what was your favorite movie out of the August Underground series, and which movie would you say is your favorite out of everything you made so far? Um, you know, you know, August Underground is my baby. It's my first film. Uh, you know, so I, I have a special kind of love for that. But out of the August Underground movies, I'm going to definitely say August Underground Penance is my favorite. I think it's the, the truest August Underground film. I think it's the darkest August Underground film. I think the the effects in it are amazing, and so the scenes that are in it are probably some of the most brutal and uh, fucked up scenes I've ever seen in any movie. Um, now, out of out of all my films, you know, it's really tough because you know you love every single one of them, but you know I'm really proud of Selma Tersica and you know what we did with no money, and we made an amazing movie. Well, that's awesome. And for for all that don't know, Sella Tersica is coming out this October of 2010. You can pre-order it right now off ToeTakeInc.com. Now, uh, hey, <laughs> this question is going to be a little fucked up, man, but uh, have you ever seen a real snuff film? <laughs> you know, I've, I've been asked this, and, you know, I've seen, I mean, with the internet today, you, you see a lot of, like, live death footage online. But back in the 80s, I saw a video of a guy walking his dog and some guy coming out of the bushes and shooting him and his dog dead. So, you know, in my, you know, in my mind, I guess that was a snuff movie. Um, but it was, just, it was just like a real killing on the street, you know. But uh, I guess that's the closest thing I've ever seen to anything. It's real stuff, the stuff that we all can check out now on the computer. That's what's up, man. Let's talk about uh, murder set pieces. Uh, you know, obviously, Toe Tag's involvement with the movie was with the special effects, but did you have any part in the writing or directing of the film? Nope, that was all Nick Palumbo. Okay. You know, when it, when it came to the special effects, we pretty much, uh, we told Nick what we can do, and he wrote around that. Uh, you know, we okay. told him, okay, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, and he, he pretty much built the script around what we can do. And then, you know, we had a nice scene, all of Toe Tags in the uh, the strip club scene at the porn shop. You can see right. us all there in that scene. Right. How, how was it like to work with uh, Tony Todd, the candy man? Oh, it was fucking amazing, dude. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, that whole night I was so nervous because, you know, I'm a huge fan of Tony Todd's. You know, not just from Candy Man, but I mean, like, some of his dramatic stuff, you know, uh, that he's been in. So, uh, you know, and just to have the opportunity and Nick being cool enough to, to have, you know, Jeremy, Shelby, Christy, and I all in one scene together, which, which, which is really cool. Yeah, and uh, I know we had a lot of fun shooting it. Awesome, man. Now, uh, you've said in previous interviews that you've been influenced by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, uh, was it an honor to meet and work with Gunnar Hansen? Oh, absolutely. You, pieces? you know, it's... Uh, it's, it's crazy, man. You know, as you go through life, uh, you know, seeing Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was a little boy uh, really inspired me. It, it kind of reminded me of Frankenstein. Leatherface kind of reminded me of, of, of Frankenstein as, like, this misunderstood guy who, you know, he just knows what he knows, and these people are trying to get into his house, and it's freaking him out. Um, so I, I always related to it, and I, just the, the iconic images from the movie always were, you know, just really were very impactful to me. And, uh, you know, I met Gunnar Hansen when I was probably like 16 or something like that at a horror convention, like a Fangory Weekend of Horrors or something. And uh, getting the opportunity to work with him was amazing. And, you know, him and I became really good friends and we're still really good friends to this day. And, you know, if you would have told me when I was, you know, 12 years old that Leatherface would call me on Christmas, I'd be, you know... Freak the fuck out! <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. 
Alright, now we're going to get into some Red Sin Tower questions, man. Okay. Um, now we know you're known for the August Underground trilogy, but what about Red Sin Tower? Was that your first idea for like a full-length featured film, or, or did you have any other ideas before you were like writing the film? Um, well, you know, Red Sin Tower kind of came out of, you know, I just didn't want people to think I was like this one-trick pony that only made these snuff movies. You know, the whole reason why I made August Underground was to try to raise money to make a big zombie movie that I wrote. But that movie was going to cost millions of dollars, and I knew I could make August Underground on a very little budget. So, you know, then when the conception of Toe Tag happened, um, you know, we needed a, a movie, and what started out as a music video became August Underground's Mortem. So by the time August Underground's Mortem was done, and August Underground, they were, they were both released on uh, DVD, you know, we wanted to do something that showed people that, you know, hey, I can make movies that aren't just, you know, shit smearing and nipples and, you know, totally <laughs> fucked up crazy stuff looking stuff. And I wanted to do something special. And it actually kind of started out with Penance, where I wanted Penance to almost be like two movies where you get like your traditional August Underground style and then you'd get your more linear film look to it. So it would bounce okay. back and forth. Um, but then. You know, Toad Tag got together and we were just bullshitting and we came up with this really great idea and put everything that, you know, we all love. Jeremy's into possession movies and I'm into slasher films, so Redson Tower was kind of born out of that. And That's then insane. I went back and did Penance and shot it like how August Underground should be shot. Awesome. Now, was Redson Tower more of a challenge movie-wise to make than, like, anything else you made previous? It, you know, it was because on this movie, on Redson Tower... Um, it was the first time I had it, I'd ever used, you know, a sound man, and you know I, I used a gaffer, and you know all these little different positions uh, that we would normally do ourselves. And when you're doing like doing an August Underground movie, uh, you know it's pretty much just me and the cameraman or whoever's holding the camera and the actors. So having all these different people, you know, working together at the same time was totally different, but. You know what, so, sometimes shooting an August Underground scene is, was more difficult than shooting a Red Sun Tower scene just because of the, the sheer choreography of hiding an effect in like a 10 minute shot. Okay, that's what's up, man. Now, now it seems in Red Sun Tower there was a, a deep storyline behind it. What inspired you to write this film and how did you go about picking the cast? You know, uh, it, was, it was pretty much, you know, we, we had this idea. Um, that we wanted to do, like I said, you know, Jeremy was really into possession movies, and I like slasher films, so we wanted to kind of, like, intertwine the two, and I wanted to make something that related to everybody, and, you know, we've all, you know, all those guys have had girlfriends, and, you know, they, they fucked us over, whatever, we get pissed, you get jealous, you know, what do you want to do, do you want to rage out, and sometimes you want to kill them, or whatever, and uh, we wanted to kind of lead you on that trail of, like, that's what was going to happen, but then also throw you a curveball as soon as these uh, these kids get inside this tower that's supposedly haunted and actually is. So uh, <laughs> we pretty much was like giving the, the genre fans like the best of both worlds. That's how I looked at it. That's awesome, man. Now, where did the filming of Red Sun Tower take place? We shot uh, probably like 98% in our old studio. Everything in there was a set. We built, we built fake walls, and it was pretty much shot against, like, four walls, you know, and we would just, you know, trick the camera, trick the lights, and you'd actually believe you're going through this big, huge tower, but it was actually just one floor, uh, almost like a, a, a little less than a thousand square foot space. Wow. That's, that's what the whole tower was. <laughs> awesome. So uh, how'd you go about picking the cast for this movie, for Redson Tower? We, uh, we had a really great casting uh, guy on this movie. His name was Bill Holman. And uh, we went around to all the different colleges in, around Pittsburgh to try to find some fresh faces. And uh, everyone was around, you know, 18 to 23. Nobody was older than that. So, because uh, I, I hate when, you know, you, especially back in the day, you'd see, like, kids that were in high school and they're played by, like, a 40-year-old man with a beard or something. <laughs> so I wanted these kids to be fresh and young and, you know, uh, good looking and, and kind of like re be these characters. I wanted to lose the stereotypical pothead, with the long hair, and I have you know Phil Pepper, who's like he has the beard. And he's kind of like an urban, <laughs> and uh, you know just wanted to make it a little different. Awesome man.